we are going to see today one more example of geometric sequences. And then we're going to move on to quadratic sequences. Now, luckily for you guys, geometric or exponential sequences, not very common in the papers. So I'm only going to do one exam question on it. Then we're going to move on to quadratic. And quadratic is going to be important because they come up very often. And also, in the notes, it says that there is no formula for it. The notes lied. In actual fact, there is a formula for it that I'm going to be going through with you guys. So for you guys watching, score for you. All right. So let's get this going. All right. So exponential geometric patterns we did last time. Remember, it was if you multiply or divide by something. And no matter how many times you find a difference, you won't find that every number in that difference is the same, like with a linear pattern. And remember that the general formula for a exponential or geometric pattern is Tn equals a times r to the n minus one, where a is my first term, r is my common ratio, being what I'm multiplying each time to get to my next term. So in case you are struggling with that, you can literally just take the term divided by the previous term. Six divided by three is two, 12 divided by six is two, 24 divided by 12 is two, et cetera. And it doesn't matter if my ratio is a fraction, it doesn't matter if my ratio is positive or negative, you can still work these things out. All right, so here is the question. The question was, find the nth term. So we need to have a look at our differences. Our difference there is two. Our difference there is six. Our difference there is 18. Our difference there is a whole bunch more. So that would be 61, that would be 54, 70, 81, yes. And then we see because these aren't a constant, it is not linear. And as I introduced you to last time as some foreshadowing, we check a second difference and that would be four, that would be 12, and that would be 36. And because that's not constant, it is not quadratic, therefore it must be geometric or exponential. Great. So we know that my Tn term is A times R to the N minus one. We need to find A, we need to find R. So our A value is one, so that's fantastic one times r to the n minus one, which actually is just r to the n minus one. So now we just need to find r. So what are we multiplying each time? Well, if you can't see it, then I'm sorry. But if you can't see it, you can do, as I said last time, you take this and you divide by that. You take the one term, you divide by the previous term. Three divided by one is three. Nine divided by three is three. 27 divided by nine is three. 81 divided by 27 is three, which means that my R is three, N minus one, bam, you've got your two marks. That simple. All right. Any questions on that before we move on to quadratics? Nope, great success. All righty. So let us take that off and then we can get a nice whiteboard going. All right. Quadratic patterns 
all sequences. Now, by the time you hit these sequences, you should have already realized that quadratic sequences are related to quadratic functions. And you've done quadratic functions. They are the parabolas. So you already know that y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That is your general form of a parabola. Now, in some syllabi, you would have to do that sort of form for a quadratic sequence as well. But not Cambridge. Cambridge decides to give you a little bit of a break. So you remember when I compared the straight line, y equals mx plus c, and I said it was just like tn equals dn plus c. I'm going to do the same for parabolas now. But even better, I'm not going to use the full version. They do not require you to know what this middle term is. The middle term will always be zero. So that means that my tn is going to be an squared plus c. And that is my general term for a quadratic. Fantastic. I know something about quadratics and I don't even know what a quadratic sequence is. Even better. How am I able to identify if I have a quadratic sequence? That is my sequence. As we do always, we check our differences. My difference there is one, two, three, four, five. Not constant. So not linear. It's not a linear or arithmetic pattern. But if we check again, my differences are all one. These are constant. And because my second set of difference is constant, that makes this a quadratic pattern. Please remember, my second difference is constant, makes it quadratic. Just like quadratic is an x squared or an n squared, it's a second order function. The second difference here makes this quadratic. Again, if you go to a third one, you can then get a cubic pattern as well, but we won't need to worry about that. So, how can I find my TN formula? Well, there are two ways of doing it. First way is simply look. Try and relate the positions of each of those and just come up with a formula in your head. So question comes in, is it also quadratic if the first difference is constant? No, if the first difference is constant, it becomes a linear or arithmetic pattern. So I'm actually not even gonna go through doing this visually because in the test, it's never the quickest option. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna teach you nice, easy ways of being able to find what the what the equation is very quickly so we know tn equals a n squared plus c great all i need to know about this pattern is this first set of numbers here that number is going to help me find my a this number would help me find b but because there's no B, I don't need to worry about it. And then this number is going to help me find C. I know that 2A always equals my second difference. And I can derive why this works a little bit after this, just to let you know for interest. 
you will never have to derive any of this. None of this is also really in the syllabus for you to know about it, but why not know about it if it's something that's actually going to help you? All right. Uh, there is another question that came in. What are the first and second differences of both constants? So that would only happen if this one is zero. And if this one is zero, it is not a, a quadratic. So if this one is constant, it's linear. Because if this is constant, your next differences will automatically have to be zero. So as soon as you hit a constant difference, you stop there. So going back to this, 2a equals my second difference. And my second difference is this value. So therefore, 2a equals 1, a is a half. Very nice and simple. And then we know that a plus c equals my first term, which is this one. And I know my value of a, a is a half, plus c equals my first term of one. And therefore, I know that C must also equal a half. Putting these together, I know that Tn equals a half n squared plus a half. Now, I'm pretty sure none of you would have really guessed that. Because when you start looking for stuff, it's going to be whole numbers. And you're going to start trying different combinations of whole numbers. And that is going to waste a hell of a lot of your life. So just to check that this works, because it's always very important to check your answer. And how do we check our answer? We simply sub in values of n to see if we get the correct tn values. So we start at 1. 1 squared is 1 times a half is a half plus a half is 1. That is our first term. Great. That's not surprising because we have engineered this to work with my first term. Let's have a look at the next one. So this is uh, 2, 2 squared is 4. 4 times a half is 2. 2 plus a half, it doesn't work, does it? So what is the problem here? What is the problem? Because we should be getting 2. Hmm, it's a very good question. And this is why we always check our answers. We don't blindly believe that stuff works. I've probably made some rather silly mistake that I'm not seeing yet. To get my a as a half, it's right. I sub in a half there. I take my first term, which is one. C is a half. It's not minus a half. I know what the problem is. The problem is that I've chosen an example out of my head that is not in this form. This pattern would require a middle term of B. Ah, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, so this requires an extra middle term. So, to redeem myself, let me rather pick an actual example. All right, so this is an actual example from a paper. And 
And I do agree, as someone says, you must savor the moment when teachers make mistakes. It is true. It is our job to not make mistakes, but on the rare occasion we do. But the more important part of making a mistake is being able to find out why it was wrong. Because if you can't find out why it's wrong, then you've got a big problem. All right. So this is a question from a paper. So once again, let's quickly work out our differences. So 11 to 20 is 9. 20 to 35 is 15. 35 to 56, that is 21. 56 to 83, that is 27. Take our next. This is not constant. So not a linear or arithmetic. Our next differences, 9 to 15 is 6. 15 to 21 is 6. 21 to 27 is 6. Great. This is constant, which means it is quadratic. So remember I said to you, you need these values here. This one will help you find C. This one will help you find A. So TN is AN squared plus C. And 2A equals my second difference. And my second difference here is 6. So 2A equals 6. A equals 3. And then we have A plus C equals my first term, which is this one here. Question of aren't they meant to be swapped? I'm not quite sure what's swapped. So if you can let me know by follow up. Oh yes, you are totally right. That is meant to be A, thank you very much. That is meant to be C. This is when you start rushing stuff, thank you. So that is definitely A and that is C. So A value is three, three plus C equals my first term, which is 11. Therefore C is eight. So therefore my TN value is three N squared plus eight. Now, once again, do we blindly follow? No, we definitely don't. So we sub in n as one. One squared is one, times three is three, plus eight is 11. That's nice, we engineered it to be so. So if we sub in two, two squared is four, four by three is 12, 12 and eight gives me 20. That's looking far better. If we type in three, three squared is nine, Nine by three is 27, 27 and eight is 35. If we type in four, four squared is 16. 16 by three is 48. 48 and eight is 56. Therefore, yes, we are right. Yes, we are smiling. And yes, we are getting our marks. All right, hopefully that has cleared up the issues that you might have come across due to my previous example. So this is the one you need to learn and this is the one that you need to learn. Two very simple calculations and it will always give you the right answers.